Hello and welcome to the Morning Serve, brought to you by TikTok. I'm Emma Lawrence, joined by Casey Delacqua. Casey, let's start with Novak. He's just been so dominant, unfortunately beat our Aussie and Alex Demonor. Rewind 12 months, he probably wasn't too happy with Alex and some of those comments about the Vax debacle. Do you think he held a grudge at all? Well, he certainly looked like he was a man on a mission, Emma, didn't he? He went out there and was ready to go from the get-go and he really just dominated that performance. So it was, uh, for me, some of the comments uh, in his post-match, he said things like, "Why?" well, Jim asked him, why did you want to win? Because I wanted mm. to. And he was very clear. He even said, maybe I shouldn't start celebrating yet. Like he kind of was anticipating that. I think he's just here to win this tournament. We know what happened 12 months ago and he didn't even get to play here. That is in the past, but... This time round, he is ready and raring to go and he just did a, a great job against Alex. Too good. It does seem like he is using it as motivation. Do you think that's what makes a champion and a great athlete using outside noise or people against them as a source of motivation? Yeah, look, I think Novak almost, um, you know, does really well in those situations mm. where he he knows that perhaps, especially against Alex, where the whole Aussie crowd obviously wanted Alex to win, where he just lifted his level. Uh, I mean, his tennis was extraordinary, but uh, Novak's mental uh, strength mm. is phenomenal. I mean, he's obviously always been in the generation of Roger, Rafa, Novak. Mm. So there's even just having that mental capacity to be able to go out and continue to do his thing is pretty extraordinary. So he's going to be really tough to beat Novak, I think. Do you think that was as close to a complete performance as you're going to find. It was hard to fault that, wasn't it? It was hard to fault that. And I know that there's been talk about his injury. Mm. And I guess for me, I've said from the day one, I just, I, I believe he's got something. There's definitely a niggle there. But I guess when you think about injuries that stop you from playing, it's not one of those yeah. ones where he can't get out and compete. So I definitely think he's got this little niggle, but the taping has almost prevented it from probably getting worse. Yeah. And now we're what, Tuesday quarterfinal stage, maybe there has been some healing in that time and we heard him talking about anti-inflammatories as well. So I feel like Novak is now at quarterfinal stage, he's got three matches to go. I just think his level is going to continue to improve and he I don't know who's going to beat him. So essentially, you're giving Rublev no chance? In well, oh. yeah, look, a little, a little, a little, a little <laughs> um, but not much, to be okay. honest, Emma. I feel like Novak's um, going to, yeah, win that match. <laughs> when you think about it and you look back, 21 Grand Slam titles, potentially another one here at Melbourne Park. If that hammy stays good and, and his body in general, can you just see him, you know, a clean sweep this year? He's going to be hard to stop the entire year. He is. He's going to be extremely hard to stop, providing he keeps his body healthy. Uh, I guess the thing for Novak with the, um, the next big tournaments at Indian Wells, Miami, yeah. and because of the America still not allowing yeah. people unvaccinated, he will actually miss that part yeah. of the season. So there's still some scheduling things that Novak's going to have to work through. But in terms of Grand Slam tennis, yes, look, I think he's going to be tough to beat. Speaking of America, some of their youngsters coming out here, they just dominated that opening week. So great to see some of the young ones coming through. Can you put your finger on something? What are they doing to produce these <laughs> future stars? Look, I know it's an interesting conversation, isn't it? But I do truly believe that success drives success. Mm. And so we've seen a bunch of these Americans come through. And when you see your counterparts doing that, it definitely drives everyone to keep being better. So I think that's one thing. And then I do believe the college system that a lot of the players have come out of is just so um, crucial in terms of their yeah. development. Those development years between when you come out of juniors and then you're finding your feet on tour, to fill it with college tennis is just perfect. And a lot of the, the, the players have done that. So yeah. I think we're seeing the benefits of that as well. So what are they getting in that college system? Is it just the intensity of the coaching? Is it around the clock treatment and, and sports science? Why... Is, it, is there something that, that, that we can take away from it? Yeah, look, I, I, the biggest thing for me, I feel, is the competitiveness. So yeah. it's the court time. It's the fact that they play singles and doubles. They're with playing in a team, and so they're always playing for something bigger than themselves as yeah. well. So I just think that is just... Um, when you're out on court and you're competing, that's one. But I do also think they get gym. They get um, psychology. They also get academic stuff, which yeah. maturity yeah. plays a big part too. So I think when you pile that all together, you get these 20, 21 year old kids coming out of college in America, they're spending a heap of time on court and then they're just thriving in these environments. Look at Ben Shelton, yeah. he hustles, he's got energy, he's fiery because he's come through that system where they cheer for each other and they're loud. And I think it's great. So there's a lot to say for college tennis in America. So do you think others should follow the path of Ben Shelton and rather than go pro a few years earlier at 18, just wait, hold off, 
soak up that college system, does that seem to be the way to go? Yes, I do. I, I actually talk about it a lot to our junior athletes when they're coming through is look for a great school, look for a good college mm -hmm. where they pay for a lot too because it's expensive to turn yeah. pro and just go out on tour. Um, Rinki Hijikata did two years as well. Even if you just get a couple of really yeah. great solid years to set that foundation, uh, massive advantage, I believe. Yeah, well, it's time now. It's time now for our TikTok moment of the day. And this one was a really great moment of sportsmanship from Dan Evans. Well, we've Six seen just about everything at this Australian Open so far. And here's another one for the highlights reel during the break that you didn't see. Uh, Daniel Evans threw Andre Rublev a banana. Not sure it was the smartest thing to do, given that it just uh, upped Rublev's energy levels and he returned the favour by taking the first set. But uh, Daniel Evans certainly not taking things hard in terms of his feelings there by proving he's very caring and sharing. How good was that? We love seeing that sort of thing on court. <laughs> we do. It's nice to see the players helping each other, even if they're super competitive. Yeah, we hopefully we get a few more of those for the rest of the week. But let's get stuck into the women's quarterfinals. Donna Vekic probably doesn't get the spotlight of some of the other players. 26 years old now, a quarterfinal has equaled her best result at a Grand Slam. What do you know about her journey and do you think she's lived up to her potential? Uh, no, I don't. I think Donna's got a lot, lot left in the tank. Um, it's crazy to think she's only 26 because mm. for me, it feels like she's been around for a long time. Mm. Uh, I'm really glad to see that she's putting in some really great work. I can tell off the court mm. and that's being uh, rewarded on the court in terms of her play at United Cup and then here at the Australian mm. Open. Look, she's had some tough years. We know that she was obviously with Stan and that didn't work out, but she's just always had great family. She's got great parents around her mm. that have supported her unconditionally. And you can tell that when you speak to her. Mm. She's a great girl, Donna, and she's got a lot of um, life about her in terms of her maturity and where she's come from and where she's at now. So I do think that the best is yet to come for a player like Donna Vekic. Well, I hope it is anyway, because she's a bit of a fave of mine. Do you think... Going back a few years ago when she was with Stan, that overshadowed what she could bring individually on the tennis court because some might have seen her as Stan's girlfriend and not appreciated her athleticism. Yeah, look, I think to some degree, and I think we have to be empathetic to the fact that a lot of the tennis players also like to be in relationships, yeah. and you go through all of that as a teenage um, woman as well, and I think that was just part of Donna's journey, and she's now 26, she's, as I said, got great parents and always had good support around mm. her, so now it is definitely her time to shine, and she has a great head-to-head -head record against Sabalenka. Mm. She's five and one, and I just, um, I've got a, a feeling that Sabalenka is playing extraordinary tennis, but I think for Donna particularly, she's got a lot of experience behind her now, but she also has this confidence about her. So, and she's got Pam Shriver in her bo player's box as well. So uh, yeah, interesting to see how, if Donna can keep this level up. If I'm gonna put you on the spot and you have to tip a winner, well, look, I think I'm going to still go with Sabalenka. She's been so calm with her emotions. She's kept them in check, which was a big um, thing for Sabalenka to have to work on. She's improved the serve. So I am going to go Sabalenka, but I'm going to go in three sets, and it'll be a tight one. OK, and the other quarterfinal will be Pliskova and Lynette. Talk me through who will win this one and why. Well, I do believe Pliskova's going to win, but it won't, again, be easy as well. Pliskova's serving really well. We know she can bomb down some aces. Lynette is obviously um, playing some wonderful tennis. She's a bit more of a counter-puncher, but she's started to step inside the baseline. She's working with Ian Hughes, who is Svitolina's old coach. So she's got some um, experience behind her from a coaching perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go with Pliskova, but I do as well think we're going to have some really great women's quarterfinals tennis for everyone. And who do you think would have the best chance? I know I'm making you pick, pick <laughs> a lot of the winners here, but has the best chance to go on and, and win it on Saturday? Well, look, I think Pagula is, is looking good, but obviously in this part of the draw, I think um, I'm going to go with Sabalenka. I think yeah. Sabalenka is a standout for me. Yeah, well, there's so many storylines to be written and... From what we've seen already, there have been upsets galore, so really who knows what will happen. Casey, really appreciate your time. Thanks, Emma. And thank you everyone so much for joining us here on the Morning Serve, thanks to TikTok.